continuing with this uh, dex shot, the uh, run and slice uh, attack sort of thing. Why don't I make this bigger, start from the beginning, and hit play. A um, couple of things that I worked on this week. The first thing is I really tried to incorporate a little bit more of the hip movement, uh, the center of gravity here, in between these attacks. It was pretty kind of locked in place uh, on the last version. And I tried to get a better uh, cut angle here on this first attack. Uh, it's still maybe not perfect, but I think it definitely gives a better idea. Instead, before it was like kind of cutting around the training dummy, and now it's definitely cutting through it. And I can uh, see I've got a uh, penetration issue here that I'll have to fix. <laughs> He's actually inside the training dummy here for a few frames, so I'll have to fix that. Um, I really did try to get some follow through and overlap with his left arm as he's going between these two training dummies, but it still looks pretty locked and frozen, so uh, I definitely have more work to do there. And this last attack, I ended up putting a slide into it, and then he jumps up and lands, and then you know the training dummy falls apart. Um, I'm going to change it back to, I think previously I just had him running up to it. And what I liked about this was some of the posing that I was able to get. Uh, it looks a little funky here around the cog, but I like the C shape into the reverse C shape of that spine uh, as he's getting lower and then stretches out for the cut and jumps off screen. But I'm just getting some weird, I don't know. It, it, it kind of takes, it distracts from the rhythm of the shot is really what's going on. If I, if I play that at full speed, um, it just, you know, it's like cut, cut, and all of a sudden, whoa, wait a minute, what happened? You know, you, you, you don't really see that slide, that anticipation into the slide. It just happens and you're not ready for it. And then this thing that's kind of the uh, climax of the whole shot happens and it, it just takes away from that. So I think I need to get this back to just running. Worry more about squash and stretch here instead of the C and reverse C spine shape. And here is also where I'm probably going to put in some smear frames. So uh, the actual C reverse C, you probably wouldn't have even seen it uh, by the time I end up putting that in. And then you can also see that I've uh, managed to animate the training dummy bots here. Uh, I've got them being chopped in half and as I've said before I'm not a modeler <laughs> but I really am kind of pleased with how those turned out. So I thought I'd spend the rest of this video talking about uh, how I accomplished that using the multi-cut tool within Maya. Uh, the multi-cut tool can be used to uh, cut and slice faces or uh, insert edge loops. So I wanted to slice through this training dummy at a specific angle. And what you can do here is if I select this and I shift right click, I get uh, as one of the option here is the multi-cut tool. If I hit this box, that's going to open up the options. So when you access these options, you can tell uh, Maya what you want this tool to do and what I want it to do is to extract the faces I want to make us a, a cut and then I want this object to um, Appear separated so I check this extract faces button and then you can experiment with um, You know how big you want this space to be And then you simply Cut along whatever straight line that you want it to do so let's say I do it there, and now you can see it's kind of split that apart. So if I go back here into object mode and we can close this off, you can kind of see that I've sliced through that object, which is exactly what I wanted, and it separated it a little bit so I can see the difference. The problem then that I run into is Maya still considers this to be one object. So if I move it around, 
it's one object. <laughs> so what I needed to do is I need two separate objects because I want to be able to animate each piece separately. So what I can do now is shift right click and there is a command called separate. So if I do that, I have now separated these two objects, which is great, but now you can see they're hollow objects and I want them to appear as a solid object. So for example, what I should be able to do is to take all of these edges around this hole. And if I go to edge mode and I select all the edges around the hole, so on and so forth, there's an option here called fill hole and that should fill the hole. <laughs> I, <laughs> I had a really hard time getting that to happen. What you're supposed to be able to do if you want to select all the edges, is you're supposed to be able to select an edge and then select a non-adjacent edge, like say this one here, and double click. And that's cool. It, it did that, but I still need these edges around here to go. So if I hold shift and I double click, it's selected all these edges. I don't want all of these edges. So I just had a really hard time. Even when I manually selected the edges, there's got to be some hidden edges going on here because it still would not allow me to do that. So if I couldn't use the fill hole command, what was another way to do it? Well, I could take the existing geometry. So I grabbed like these two edges here at the top. And if I bring up the move command and I hit shift, and if you can see, if I highlight any of these uh, directional arrows, it says extrude. So if I go down, what I've done here is I've created geometry with those edges right there. Now that's awesome because now what I can do is I can use <laughs> another tool called the target weld tool and I can start welding vertices together. Basically what I end up doing is uh, turning it to vertex mode and if I select one of the vertexes and I shift right click under merge vertices there's something called the target weld tool. Well I want to take that vertice and I want to weld it to that one, this one to that one, and this one to that one. And now you can see that I've got a face uh, stretching across there. So another way, another thing that I need to do is I need to connect it here. Uh, just looking at the angles, I need to have one here, one here, one here, and that should do it. So one, two, three. I need to make uh, three edge loops on this piece here. And I should be able to do that by grabbing the multi-cut tool. And if I come here, select this again, go back to our target weld tool. Now I should be able to select that to there. I should be able to go from here to here. Okay, not do that one. How about from here to here? Oh, I guess I'm gonna have to hit another edge loop yet. And from here to here, I miscounted my edge loops. Now that's what I'm looking for. So it would have been a whole lot easier if I could have used that fill command and I'm sure I'm just doing something wrong. Uh, but now what I want to do is I want to select these faces because I don't want them to be dark like the outside of this. I want it to be light and all I did was I just selected the uh, uh, standard Lambert so it appears lighter on the inside. If I turn that back to object mode and deselect it uh, that's how I did that. And then I would do the same operation for the other one. So I am certain <laughs> that there is an easier way to do this, but what I did accomplished what I was looking for. So that's it for this video. Uh, take care and thanks for watching.